Hello and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. Today's video is sponsored by our Amazon affiliate link which you'll see in the description below. You'll also see in the description below links to any videos I mention in this video. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about creating mixed planters. And by mixed planters I mean plants with different plants in, within the same container. So uh, we're going to decide in a minute here which ones, which, dude, this is only going to fit two plants, so which, which two. Talk to, talk to you a little bit about considerations in that area. So mixed planters are really fun. You can, you, they are, they're often sold at florists because they look so pretty when you combine different plants with different um, uh, the foliage and leaf colors and variegation like this variegated croton and that sort of thing. Um, I talk about the very many different types of variegation in, in my uh, variegated um, houseplant video and also about decorating with how in my decorating with houseplants video uh, same similar talk about different leaf shapes and colors and tones and and uh, and also variegation as well so there's a lot of fun things you can do so rather than just planting one plant up in a pot and having one look you can do uh, some combining and get some really nice looks uh, looks to the plant there are some considerations, however, when you do do mixed planters. You need to make sure that the plants that you're combining in the mixed planter are plants that need the similar requirements. So you would want them to, if they are highlight plants, you're going to need to have two plants that like high light. Similarly, if they are one of them is a low light, you need both of them to be low light because the, any highlight plant mixed with a low light and put into a low light conditions is that the highlight plant is not going to do good. And what you don't want to do is then have half of the plant, half of your mixed plants are not looking so good, right? Because then you have to re replace whatever isn't looking good. So keep that in mind. Succulents. If you're going to do a mixed planter, all succulents don't they? They require very little water indoors, and uh, many other plants require a lot more water than those succulents do. So that would not be a good combination of uh, succulents with other types of plants. So. So do keep that in mind. High water users, maidenhair ferns, you're going to need to put to some high other high water users in that mixed planter. Now today I'm going to be doing a medium light uh, planter with um, plants that require that that uh, like to approach dryness, but do but do well with uh, um, some watering. Uh, some regular with regular watering and they can approach dryness, but you don't want them to dry out too much. So That is the case with all of these plants. This is a Cassandra and this is also called, called the firecracker plant and this plant has a really cool bright orange flower when it flowers, which is one reason why I'm thinking maybe of putting this plant into this planter. This is a croton and it has the beautiful variegated leaves and it's a very young croton so it's still growing here and it has uh, some of that orangey red look to it as well then we have our nice standby here the uh, uh, nice pothos which has the the hanging look too so that's another thing to consider when you're doing a mixed planter they and they do this with outdoor planters as well you want to look for something that spills and something that stands up more erect and um, and something that kind of fills in the pot as well. So the so that's uh, I'm going to just make a final decision in a minute. But first, I have this glazed ceramic container, and I do have another uh, another uh, video on choosing types of pots. And glazed ceramic is one of the types of pots. You can see it has a really cool color here. I love this kind of like a mangoey color. Do make sure when you're repotting and making a mixed planter that you do put in some sort of screen. This is drywall tape, which I like to use, and I'll double it up to make it more to make the uh, mesh more fine. There, you can also use regular screen. Put that over the drainage holes. This has a drainage hole. You want to make sure that you have a drainage hole. Now I'm going to decide. Okay, so knowing that this does get a bright orange flower is pretty cool. 
So maybe I would want these two together. However, the thing about these two together, even though I do have orange going on in the croton leaves and orange going on when this flowers, is they are both very upright. So you don't have a very a nice different kind of a look. And if this container was bigger, I would be putting more plants in it as well. So, because three is often a nice number, but this will only fit two. So now um, I'm thinking, okay, I think I might want something that spills, that spills over the side of the edge of the pot like a pothos. So you can see that gives a nice, a really nice look to the plant, to this combo. It's hanging, but also you have the upright growth. And then I'm thinking, okay, well that is very cool. And then also, and I think I see this was actually a spent flower bloom with the, with the um, orange. That's gonna look really cool once it blooms too. It'll add even another pop to it. So that's a very nice combination. But let's go ahead and see what this the spilling pothos look looks like with the croton. So this is nice as well. You have the you have the nice uh, the the uh, like we mentioned the color. That color scheme works well together. Uh, it's very pretty. Picks up that. So you're going to have constant color here too with the uh, croton being as it is. However. Uh, there's no, there's not going to be any pop of color now and then. So I'm trying to decide here which one I like best. I'm definitely going with the pothos. And I think, and of course, you know, this is a, this, everyone has their own taste. So go with whatever you really think looks good. And I'm thinking that even though this guy is going to be cool when it, when it does bloom, that I'm going to go with the croton for the more continuous color. Plus, at this point, since that it is a pretty bright orange and it may kind of actually clash with this pot, so I'm going to go with the croton because the yeah, the 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 orangey ready color in this really matches this pot really well. So now we're going to go ahead and plant this. Now, if you wanted to have a third type of pot plant in here, you would want to go for a miniature, some sort of a miniature plant. Um, you could put in here maybe a miniature fern of some sort, but just keep in mind too that whatever you do put in here is going to eventually outgrow. So if you're putting in plants up, pothos don't tend to get, they tend to have the smaller root zone and as do croton. But if you're putting in here something that has a lot of, gets a lot of root mass quickly and grows pretty tall, then um, some, like some of the dracaenas, which look really cool at this point, but they just get a lot bigger, then you're going to be repotting your mixed planter probably sooner than you would like. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this guy out of here. And it's definitely, this is the good news about this too, is it's ready to be repotted. I'm going to take off the top part of the soil so we can get some new soil in here. Put this in there. We want, as I mentioned in, I mentioned in other repotting videos, about a quarter of an inch around the top of the pot that's left without anything so that when you water, the water stays in the pot. It doesn't overflow over the top. You don't want it too deep because when you have plant them too deep, you create a very humid situation down inside of the pot, which will lead to pests and diseases. And the plant doesn't get enough water because there's not enough soil. So I put this one in. I'm going to take the pothos out too. This was a pothos that was in a prior recent video that had um, mealybugs and was put outside to get rid of the mealybugs. And now it's doing really well and has grown quite a bit now that it's not being plagued by mealybugs. So we've got this one in here. And then just kind of lift it, look at, look at it, see what looks best. If you're going to have these, it's going to be showing from one side, then definitely make sure that whatever side is going to be showing looks great, really good. So I'm going to do that with this. I've got the, the leaves showing really nicely on the croton, filling in with the soil. Gonna have nice new soil here too, so they're gonna really start to look really nice after a while. But both of these plants are gonna be very healthy and growing nicely and putting on new foliage. And then the croton variegation is gonna look good with this nice color pot. I love this color of this pot. It'll be a very nice decorative element. 
This is pre-moistened soil. I generally use Promix BX because it's my favorite. It has mycorrhizae and a lot of other good, good nutrients. I also added to the soil a little bit of my uh, green gourmet houseplant food as well to, get, to give them a nice, really good boost and start in, the, in their growing conditions together. And you can see now we've got these two together, so it's that's why it's so important that they re, re, they they um, they need the same types of watering, the same moisture, the same the same lighting, even the same humidity level. Pothos is a very pretty e tolerant, easy to grow house plant, so it will go for more moisture, it'll go for less moisture. The croton is a little trickier in that regard. It really can't dry out, um, but it doesn't like to be overwatered. So if you have maybe one plant, like a little trickier plant, then opt for an easier to grow plant. And I do have another video on easy to grow plants as well, house plants as well. So opt for mixing and matching with easy to grow and maybe a little bit more difficult to grow or just, just say more a little more challenging. Okay, so now, Got this down here, making sure to firmly tap down, but not not too rough, but but firmly down so we get this all down there. And you want to also water as soon as you repot any plant. You want to wa water them with tepid or warm water. It's best to water until water comes out the bottom of the pot. I'm Likely we'll start to see that very soon and you can see the areas where so when I'm watering here if the plant does get a little So the soil is coming up a little bit over the top and this can I can take this opportunity to go in and find the areas where it may be a little too high and push it down a little bit take out soil if necessary so you ensure that the, the soil stay, the water stays in with the soil and doesn't flow over the side. Okay, so then of course, cleaning it off a little bit. I will wipe it off later afterwards with a cloth or something, keep it cleaned up. But you can see that this looks really pretty, nice mixed planters, a much, much different look than you get with just the two separate plants even next to each other. Once you put them together, there's something about putting them together within a, a, a container that makes it more of a centerpiece and, and, and uh, than when they're separate. If you do have two plants you really want to put together and they do require different growing situations, ex in, especially in terms of watering, what I would suggest doing is growing them in their separate pots within the uh, outer pot that you want to use and then just taking them out and watering them as they need to, as they need it. So now you have a nice, pretty plant for your table. Well, thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video.